Let's see if that kicks it over. All right. So, as you guys have seen, uh, I got a new mic, so I figured I'd try it out. Um, worked the other day for me, but for some reason it wants to play a little bit mean with me right now. So anyways, uh, Jonathan Bellano, Bellano Home over at Keller Williams. Um, hope all of you are having a great night, enjoying your week. Uh, happy hump day for sure. Uh, tonight, uh, as you guys know, I'm solo. It's pretty much every other week. Um, throw out there real quick that if you guys are in the trades, uh, you're a contractor, you're into construction, you're, um, you work with properties, um, you have real estate type of jobs or things that you can help out families with and you kind of want to be uh, showcased on here, uh, I want to let you guys know that you can definitely reach out to us and we can try to coordinate something. I've had a few people reach out to me so far and that's what's keeping these kind of going from here on. Um, for those of you that have joined, thank you for joining. Um, for those of you that are watching after this video is going, if you're on YouTube right now, make sure to hit the subscribe button to hit the little bell so that way you guys can get notified every single time that we do these videos. If you're on Facebook, make sure you go to bolano.home if you're watching from my personal page. Uh, I'm going to drop that link up on here right now for you. Uh, so that way you guys can uh, like our personal, I mean our Facebook page. Um, and for those of you that are everywhere else, come jump over and, and take a look at us. I'm forgetting that about myself right now. But anyways, uh, some of the things that I want to talk to you guys about today, it's going to be uh, more geared towards the seller. Um, and what sellers need to know when looking to list that property. Um, but first and foremost, where I'm going to go with this uh, is the $250 Amazon gift card. If you guys have not watched this before, I want to let you know now that if you share these videos, that you automatically get entered into a raffle to win a $250 Amazon gift card. We want run this once a quarter, so the first quarter is up on March 31st. So uh, the following week will be... Uh, discussing with you guys or telling you guys who won the $250 Amazon gift card. Um, last month, I mean, uh, last quarter, we ended up having someone uh, win. It was on the hashtag Let's Talk. So you can see that under our uh, YouTube page or our Facebook page. Um, and just so that way you guys know uh, what this video is supposed to be, it's a, an, a live interactive video, something where you guys can kind of join us. And if you have like real estate questions, lending questions, uh, questions regarding properties, so on and so forth. You have a forum here to kind of reach out to somebody, to to a professional, without having to sit down with them, without having to sign over your life to them and say, hey, I got a few questions, what do you think? Um, we've had quite the number of people message us after these videos, uh, so some of them during these videos, and we appreciate everything. Um, so regardless of how you guys reach out to us before, during, or after, uh, we're all ears and we're here to help you guys no matter what. Um, so uh, we definitely want to let you guys know that uh, a lot of homes trying to make ourselves um, you basically your, your one-stop shop for real estate education whether you're a buyer seller um, or just looking to try to get smart on the market I mean this is what we want you guys to think so when you guys think of a home you guys think of buying a home think of a home because we want to be there for you we want to make ourselves that forefront people for you um, moving forward uh, the way that I kind of structure this all the time is uh, we talk about that gift card and we jump right into the current market. And so as of right now, we only have uh, data for January and um, up until February 11th with some other information that we have. Um, so that way you guys are aware, the median price as of January of 2019 has gone up by 3.3% from the previous month. Um, so since December and the December statistics uh, showed that the number of homes, well, this is median price. Um, actually, this is all blurry right now, so forget it. So yeah, so I lied to you. The median price is from 2018. So for those of you that are looking to sell, this is definitely a better year to sell. We're still in the seller's market, which means that homes are only sitting on the market for a short period of time. Right now, we have a 3.2 month inventory. Uh, if you guys had a chance to see our Instagram or see our Facebook post the other day, I think it was over the weekend, um, I put up an infographic of the January 2019 um, statistics. And so what it would look like is this right here, but in color. So if you guys want to see more on that, uh, go take a peek. Um, where is that sheet? So 
Some of you have asked me also, and I've explained this in previous videos, what does it mean to be in a seller's market? Um, how do you calculate that? Where are those calculations from? And so what I want to let you guys know is that uh, that calculation comes from the number of homes that are sold divided by the average number of homes sold per month over the past 12 months. Um, so like I said, number of homes for sale currently divided by the average number of homes sold per month over the last 12 months. Um, and that's where they get that 3.2 months worth of uh, inventory, which means that that's basically how long a house is kind of sitting on the market. Um, you can tell you whether you're not in a sales market or a neutral market or a buyer's market by those months right there. So zero to four is your seller's market. Uh, five to six is your neutral market, or your, your average market was on either side. And then your buyer's market ends up being seven plus months. Um, so what does it mean to be in a seller's market? Seller's market means that Shoot, I'm blanking out right now. It's been a long day. I just got off a flight from Virginia, so um, you guys are gonna have to bear with me. Um, but seller's market means that um, sellers have the ability to kind of uh, price out their properties a little bit higher because there's um, a lot of buyers out there and not a lot of properties up on the market at that point of time. Uh, so since buyers um, kind of get stuck into this uh, bidding war, basically, uh, looking for properties since there's so many of them looking for a property at a time, and so that's kind of the market that we've been sitting on for the last couple, couple of uh, months. And you guys have already seen that anyways in the past couple of videos. So I'm just going to jump right through that um, and get more into the lines of like what I want to talk to you guys about today. So you know that we're in a seller's market. Um, you, you've been watching our videos maybe and have been grabbing some information. But I really want to kind of dig down a little bit into um, what it means to get your property listed and what kind of steps you should be aware of in listing your property. And these steps include such things as like finding an agent, um, going through showings and, and getting inspections and appraisals and such. So uh, when looking to sell your property, one of the first things I highly recommend and that we highly recommend is first contacting a real, local real estate agent. Um, real estate agents are like the biggest tool that you could have and the most valuable tool that you could have in selling your property. Um, and the reason why I say this is because I look at it like this. Um, you're going to go sell your property by yourself, do a for sale by owner. And put up your own sign and put up little things here and there um what that to me looks like if i wasn't in the real estate market or in the real estate business it looks like a first like a a yard sale um so what do you think about when you go to a yard sale you think about lowballing the price dropping the price and, and kind of uh getting whatever it is that's there for the cheapest amount but then again you go to like a nike outlet or a nike store or um, a joseph and banks or whatever you want to call it and you don't bargain the price and why because there's value by having it at that storefront um, versus if it was to be at a yard sale the same exact button up at a store is going to be a lot different than at a yard sale um, and so when going with a real estate agent you kind of get that store approach where the price is what it is and it automatically gives the property some value in addition to that you have a real estate agent that person's going to be your representative through the entire transaction and we're not talking about just being a representative um, or being a good friend or or just sitting there and just like throwing your property up and just watching it sit there. We're talking about a person that's gonna, that's a professional that's been doing this, that's been through a number of transactions, that kind of knows their ins and outs with all their documents and can help push the transaction along when you have things like work to go maintain, family life, um, so on and so forth. You wanna keep doing your health thing and going to the gym. You don't wanna spend the time going through purchase and sales agreements and having to be there for the inspection appraisal and having to go through all the phone calls. Um, it may sound easy to some, but in all actuality, it's actually very complicated because of all the different personalities and all the different people that you have involved in our transaction. And trying to do that while juggling a, a full-time job, a family, and so on and so forth isn't always the easiest thing in the world for many people. So finding an agent is really in your best interest because you get your time back and you also have a professional sitting there putting your property up on the market and fighting for the highest and best uh, value uh, for your property <coughs> while it is up. Um, Following that, uh, let's say you get the, the real estate agent and you find someone that you like that meshes well, that communicates well, um, that has a good team behind them as far as like kind of like uh, attorneys and, and um, a brokerage. For example, like working at Keller Williams, we have a lot of great other agents that are there um, that help support and that we can share these properties with um, to help get your mark property the most exposure possible. Um, but going from there, um, after you pick that real estate agent, that person that's going to represent you through the transaction, 
let's say uh, you, you pick that person and, and now your home is listed up there. Well, you're going to go through some documents that your agent can kind of talk to you through. And every situation is going to be a little bit different from the next. So I don't want to get too built, beat up into the weeds of how the documents go. But you get your property listed. You get everything put up on MLS and Zillow and Truly and all that other fun stuff. But before you even get there, um, one of the things that we recommend is sitting down with your agent and talking about their marketing plan. What do they have in mind for putting it out there and trying to give your home the most exposure possible? And why does that matter to you? It matters because you want to get as many buyers out there looking at your property. I mean, we're talking about being in a seller's market and how they get into bidding wars. And so if you can only increase that and get your property instead of just being in front of two or three people bidding on your property and get it to five or six that have a, a wide variety of like, um, pre-approval numbers and limits that they can kind of go to. We're talking about getting your property to a point where um, you literally get the highest and best offers possible for your home, um, giving you the highest number uh, for your pocket. Um, so marketing plans are very, very important. If someone's just putting it up on Zillow and Trulia, every agent has that ability. And I'm going to repeat that. Every agent has the ability to put it up on MLS, which goes to Zillow, Trulia, and Realtor, and all those other normal sites that you guys are used to seeing when typing in the words real estate into Google. But what are the job, what are things that they're going to be doing for you? Are they going to be promoting hard on Facebook, on Instagram, on um, YouTube? Are they just taking uh, pictures with their cell phone? Are they just taking pictures with a, a Polaroid <laughs> camera? Like what, what are their, what's their view of marketing and what does that mean for your property? Do you think that that's going to give you the best marketing or the best exposure for your home? Um, I, I can assure you that um, I've seen people look like they've taken pictures with flip phones and I can promise you that that doesn't give your home the best first impression to buyers and other realtors. And sometimes you have realtors that are working with buyers and this is why this is important too. Um, sometimes realtors are working with buyers and they'll figure out what do their buyers like? What do their buyers dislike? Um, what has been appealing to their buyer during the course of them working with them? If they see a picture that comes from a flip phone that's all kind of pixelated or blurry, let's say the buyer wants something that's all finished up or at least like clean looking and that picture doesn't give that home that kind of exposure, well, now that real estate agent's never going to put it in front of that buyer because right off the bat, the real estate agent's deferred. This doesn't even have to do with a buyer seeing it on Zillow or Truly or Realtor and so on and so forth. Um, so you like lower the amount of exposure just due to that alone. So having professional pictures is extremely important. Um, maybe you have a larger home and you want to get 3D pictures or you want to have a drone come over and take a picture of the property. I mean, all situations, like I said, are very different from the next. And at the minimum, what I think that would be done is a professional picture, having a professional photographer come in and really show the best angles or show the best parts of, of your property, of your home. And so talking to your real estate agent, once again, about marketing, um, where are they putting your property? How are they going to list your property? How are they going to take the photos? Uh, are they going to do videos? What are the cases in which case they could do that? Um, and then is your home going to be staged? I think that's, that's not so much in the marketing, but at the same time, I kind of feel it is because someone's coming to your home to take photos and the home's completely blank. Um, that's all well and good and it shows that the property is uh, ready to move in. But at the same time, you could always put that into the description and let people know that this home is uh, turnkey basically or, or ready for somebody to move into. But having it staged, let's say you have an awkward layout to your house, having it staged kind of gives buyers that are coming through a kind of a feel of like how they would uh, lay out the property, how they would put their uh, furniture in there and so on and so forth. Um, so those are other things that you kind of want to think about. What are those costs? Are they something that um, you have to kind of take on and or what are other options in doing that? Um, so like I said, going through that marketing, definitely jump into that. And um, from there, after you kind of come up with a marketing plan, you want to talk about um, what does it mean to have to go through the showing process and open houses, uh, inspections and appraisals. So I'm going to categorize all those into one real quick because I don't want to go too, too into detail because I want to do a video uh, pre-recorded um, kind of after this and kind of dig down deeper onto each part of that. Uh, but um, for showings, open houses, uh, inspections and appraisals, you want to treat them almost the same. You, you always want to treat it like it's uh, the first time that you're showing the property. So you want to make sure that the yard's clean that uh, hedges are cut back, grass is cut, 
um, give it really that, that beautiful curb appeal. And then for the inside of the house, declutter, get rid of personal memorabilia and all that other fun stuff because you want the prop buyer or whoever is going to be walking through that property to look at it and think about themselves being there and themselves being the ones looking at your home um, and seeing themselves in there. All right. So getting rid of a lot of that and kind of clearing it up so that way people can feel like this were theirs. It gives them a better, ch gives you a better chance at them putting in offers for your property. And so you want to treat every single one of those the same inspections and appraisals too, because even though the inspector is not going to be buying the house, if they walk in there and everything's all a mess, automatically, intuitively, they're going to create that bias that says this property is going to have problems and they're going to look deeper for problems and they're going to try to find more things that are wrong to let the buyer know about. And the same thing with appraisals because an appraiser is coming through looking out for the bank's best interest and trying to make sure that the buyer is not overspending on the property. Now, if you have clutter all over the place, yards not cut or maintained uh, and the house is maybe just dirty. Um, I mean, it's automatically going to create that, like, going to influence that that person's bias and it's saying, this probably isn't worth that. And even though that it has a certain number of bedrooms and you can run all the CMAs and all that fun stuff the same, those things do have an impact. And so, like I said, always treat a person walking through your property the same. Always have it clean. Always have your yard taken care of, managed. Um, always be decluttered. Find the space. It, let's say... Let's say you live in a smaller home and you're kind of outgrowing it, and so you have a lot of stuff all over the place. One of the things that we recommend is boxing up all the things you don't use on a regular basis. Find an area maybe in your basement or in your garage, in your shed, and store all that there. Get it out of the way, out of sight, and just put it all nice and neatly in, let's say, big Tupperware containers or in boxes, and just get it out of sight, out of mind. So that way when buyers walk through, like I said, they can envision themselves living there. Um, going from there... Uh, you kind of come up to a uh, final walkthrough. So you, so let's jump back a little bit. Showings, open houses, you already know buyers are coming through, looking at the property, determining whether or not this is a property for them. Um, finally, let's say you get a couple of uh, people that are interested at the same time. You get a bunch of offers in. Um, this is where you would talk to your real estate agent and determine what's the best offer for you. Uh, and every situation is very much different. So I really don't want to dig down into that one. But if you are planning to work with a realtor, you're already working with one and watching this, um, definitely speak to your realtor and understand fully what does what do the different types of loans mean? What does it mean that if you have to pay $5,000 towards closing or some other number? Um, what does it mean to uh, have something based off of a, a, con a contingent on like uh, inspections or appraisals? Um, and seller being able to, I mean, buyer being able to secure finances, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There are all these different types of contingencies, and, and you definitely want to fully understand those when working with your realtor uh, to understand which option is the best one for you. Um, and also keep in mind, like, closing date. How quick can they close versus another? Is it a cash? Is it deal? Or is it a lender um, kind of letting a borrower finance? I mean, yeah, finance that. Some are seen as stronger. Some are seen as weaker. Once again work with your realtor, they can kind of kick you through that. Um, but let's say you uh, accept an offer and then you go through the inspection and the appraisal. Inspection basically is somebody coming in um, for the buyer saying, helping them to understand uh, what's going on with the property as far as structural or um, like the integrity of the home. Um, does electricity all up to date? Does it look like it's in good condition? Is everything grounded? Uh, is the roof old? Does the roof look like it needs repairs? Are the pipes all good? Uh, is the water working? Is the heating working? So on and so forth. Um, so the inspector is going to come in and they're just going to let them know what are they getting themselves into. And that's when you hit kind of maybe another negotiation standpoint where you can hit a repair it on them. Not going to jump into that. Let you talk to your realtor. I'm going to do another video on that coming up. Uh, but let's say you get through all that. Inspection ends up being good and you jump into the appraisal. Appraisal, like I said, just the bank making sure that the buyer is not overpaying for their money. I mean, for their property and so this kind of is something that you kind of touch base on not so much in a buyer's market more in a seller's market where you kind of get those bids over and over and over and you get to a point sometimes where you're going to get offers to a, a number that a bank isn't going to approve uh, because although everybody may want that property a bank may not banks don't have that emotional connection to it and they're looking at it from a number standpoint and saying hey you got a three bed one bath property uh selling for uh, 240 and you got in bids over here like the, the average price for that property is let's say 240 
Um, but you got bids that have lead, led you up until the 250 marker. Well, banks got to come in and say, well, if this buyer defaults on this loan, we're only able to get 240, maybe a little bit less. And so they need to find out a way to get that number lower. And so either the buyer has to come up with that extra 10K, if that's what the bank has appraised it at, uh, 240, or the seller, you, would have to drop that price to kind of meet that so that way that buyer can make that deal. Um, that's something definitely to keep in mind because it could make or break a deal right there and realize that the, the bank is just looking out for their best interests. The buyer may or may not have that those funds. So um, one in the bidding market, definitely, once again, work with your realtor and try to understand what it means to kind of get bid out of the appraisal uh, period um, or that standpoint. Hector, thank you for joining. Remember, everybody, that uh, these videos are interactive. If you guys do have questions, you can always drop them up right here. Um, but breaking out of the appraisal, let's say they appraised at the exact right spot, um, and now you're going to get over to the final walkthrough, um, which means that everything that you might have agreed upon for repairs or things that need to be done for the appraisal um, would need to be done either by a date that was agreed upon beforehand or by the final walkthrough which is usually either the day or two before or the day of closing. And this just means that the realtor, um, the buyer, well, the, the buyer's realtor, I mean agent, sorry, I'm trying to speak in terms that I understand that you guys that might not be following real estate on a casual basis would understand. So the buyer's realtor, uh, so anyways, if you are a real estate agent, I know I'm not using the proper terms right here, but I'm just, like I said, just trying to speak to um, people that are going through this for the first time. So the buyer's realtor and the buyer would walk through there in the final walkthrough and make sure that everything that was agreed upon um, is done. So let's say uh, one of the light switches wasn't working and that was one of the things that you guys had agreed would need to be done. So they make sure that the light switch is working. Uh, let's say the, the heating had something or let's say the roof needed to be done by that point. Um, you kind of go through that checklist and determine uh, all right, is this done? Check. And then you would sign that off. Or the buyer would sign that off and verify that, like I said, all that is taken care of. And if it's not, then we have a few problems and such. But let's say that's all good because you guys are doing everything the right way because your realtor is teaching you and coaching you the right way. Uh, and you walk into the closing table, that's where you basically just exchange the keys over. You sign over some documents, make sure that uh, the, the, the attorney would have done their due diligence by then and made sure that the title was clear, that there were no liens on the property, and if there were, they would have taken care of those, which basically gets to the closing table, and, and now you have exchanged that property over to that buyer, and uh, you are off on to whatever next step in your life is. Um, so like I said, from a high level, uh, the things that you need to be aware of as a seller is first, finding a real estate agent. Second, you're going to try to comp out your property, um, run CMAs, and... and Make sure that you, the agent's showing you why they come up with the number that they do and kind of help guide you into a good price so that way your home sells quick because you don't want it to sit on the market. Um, and so you kind of run through those CMAs and then boom, you go into the showing and open houses, make sure your home's clean, decluttered, get to the inspection, see the appraisal portion uh, where uh, the, the buyer understands what they're getting themselves into and the bank is approving this loan of that amount hit the final walkthrough, make sure all your stuff is done by then, all your T's are crossed and all your I's are dotted, um, and make sure you've communicated with your agent to make sure that um, everything that was put together, that was agreed upon, is being taken care of. Uh, you, don't want, you want to make sure that you don't drop something off of the, off the, what do you call it? You don't want to drop anything, basically, and find out at the walkthrough, like, oh, shoot, there was supposed to be some paint done on the outside of the house. And then you have to go and do that, and now you have to extend the closing out for that. Um, and then you go to the closing table, and you just basically sign some documents, and the attorney ends up walking you through that. Uh, but it's really that that clear cut right there. Um, there are more details behind it, and everybody's situation is different, which, once again, is the reason why you guys want to work with a realtor, uh, somebody that's been doing this and been through a bunch of transactions and such and, and has that experience. Um, so... Uh, if you guys are looking to sell um, or you know somebody that's looking to sell, make sure to send them our way. Uh, we are looking to, to help teach everybody along the way and make sure that the communication is out there um, and give properties the maximum exposure that we can. Uh, outside of that, everybody, it has been a long day for me. Plane ride has been uh, crazy and it is time for me to actually to go to sleep, which I normally don't do at this time. But uh, thank you guys for those of you that are joining. 
For those of you that are watching this afterwards, thank you once again for joining. I'm going to try to fix this video so that way I can crop out the beginning portion of this where you guys are just sitting around. I was trying to get the mic fixed up. Um, and that's pretty much that. Uh, next week, I am going to have somebody special come in and joining us. Um, so I'm working through the details on that right now. So definitely be on the lookout. I'm going to release more details as the week progresses. Uh, but definitely take a look at the old videos. Um, let's say you're looking for a painter or a roofer. Um, or you're looking for uh, some help around the property or, or around your house to clean up the yard and such. I have videos with uh, a painter, a roofer, and rent sons. Um, Patrick Brown, not Patrick Kelly. Messed up his name last week because I had a friend, Patrick Kelly, growing up. But uh, yeah, so uh, take a look at those guys. All good guys, all transparent, and all looking to do a good job. Um, tons of quality that these guys bring to the table. So definitely go take a look at that. I'm going to repeat. If you guys are on YouTube, definitely hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell right next to us. That way you guys get notified the moment that new videos come up. If you're on Facebook, definitely like us and definitely go check out our Instagram. We're posting things up constant, pretty much daily, um, a few times a day, kind of letting you guys know uh, what's going on in our lives, uh, how things are changing and, and just new stuff that's hitting the market. Uh, so that way you guys can see things beforehand. Let's say you're going to be buying and you kind of want to see what's going on in the market. I walk people through our open houses uh, with videos so you guys can see those live uh, and you guys can see anything that we're putting up there as well. Uh, what else is there? Amazon gift card. Make sure you share, 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 share. It is in your best interest to share these videos because every single time you do uh, for each quarter, you're going to get entered into that raffle and you can share this video, for example, 20 times and we would enter you 20 times and that gives you 20 times more of a chance to basically uh, win that $250 Amazon gift card and um, you can use that for pretty much anything Amazon offers like buying me a present because uh, I could use a new pillow right now as you guys can see um, definitely a little tired right now but anyways uh, thank you guys for joining y'all are great thank you for being part of the Bolano Home family I hope these videos are useful to you uh, definitely reach out if I can ever help you out with anything we're here for you guys love you guys have a great night Thank <laughs> you.